Hello, this is Angela Caicedo and I want to show you what is new with the Scene Builder. You've seen uh, previously another video where I presented all the features that Scene Builder has, uh, but in that video uh, what happened was uh, there wasn't really a connection between the Scene Builder and NetBeans. So pretty much we have both of them open and we have to go back and forth to be able to work with them. Now it's different. Now there is a better integration, so I'm going to show you what are the new features that you have in NetBeans 7.2 working together with the same builder. In the previous exercise also, some people asked me where they can find the exercises. Um, so the issue tracking light demo, all the code for the controller and everything can be found in the samples zip file that comes with the scene builder. So if you go to the download website for the scene builder, you will see also that there is a sample file. So download that one, unzip it, and then you will find the issue tracking light that is the project we're going to be using. So, so far, I have SimBuilder install, installed on my machine and I have NetBeans 7.2. Uh, we can go ahead and open the issue tracking light, so it depends where you unzip the file, you will find this particular project. And uh, so there's a, uh, a few things that ha has been already created for you. So, for example, we already have a Java controller, so we have an issue light controller. And if we open up, it's, it's not really rocket science. Um, there is a bunch of uh, imports that we have available. And we have some of the components, UI components, that are going to be created on FXML file. So we're going to create them using Scene Builder. Uh, you can see that we have here the annotations, uh, so this is uh, meaning that uh, this particular button, for example, will be injected from FXML file. Okay, uh, we have some resources, we have a CSS file, and we already have a FXML file. We can actually double click, uh, and what it's going to do is actually going to open up the scene builder for me. So this is already a creating file. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in, in the scene builder. I mean, we're going to spend some time, but I don't want to go into every single detail because this has been covered in the previous recordings. What I want to really focus on is in the integration with NetBeans. So here you can actually see the uh, window, the screen that we're going to be creating here. So let, uh, let me just close this one. So what we're going to do, we're going to rename this particular file and we're going to create a new one, okay? I'm just going to rename this as old. And we can come and create a new file either from um, the icon here or you can come to File, New File. Okay, so we have JavaFX, and we're going to create an empty FXML file. Okay, we want to name it the same, Issue Tracking Light. And what I want to do is I do want to use a Java controller. We do not want to create a new one because we already have one. So we want to use an existing one. So we dig into here, just make sure we are in the correct directory, and we pick that Java controller. And then it's also asking for the style sheet that we are using. So yes, we do have a CSS file, we just need to use the existing one and make sure you select that one. Okay, finished. So what is going to happen is just an empty FXML file has been created. Um, so if you double click again, we're going to get the scene builder, okay, with this um, new issue tracking light file. So a few things. So because we create this FXML from NetBeans, it already knows about the controller. So if we go here, inside the code, you already see that we do have the controller class. Uh, is there and also we can uh, pay attention to the CSS file so if we go to properties we can see also that the style sheet is being already is, is already there so a few things that um, change from the previous uh, video that I recorded so before we get any farther I just want to go and change the dimension so we have a little bit more space to work with 
And uh, as we've seen previously in, in the previous recording for Scene Builder, this is pretty much dragging and dropping components. So we have a split panel, we drag it and drop it, and we ask the tool to modify it to be able to fit the whole container. Okay, we resize. Okay, doesn't really matter how much. And then we need a split panel, so again we drag it and drop it. We fit the parent, and then we resize one more time. Okay? Another thing that goes different, so right now what we want to bring is we want to bring a list view. So we drag it and drop it, and we ask the tool to fit the parent. So in the properties, uh, if you remember correctly, we need to set the ID. Previously, in the other video, we actually uh, needed to type the ID manually. So not anymore, because it already knows that this file already has the pointer for the controller, so already knows the names of the components that are going to be injected. So we can actually just expand the list, and we can see that list is one of the IDs available. So this is the one I want to use for the list. Then we're going to bring a table. So there is a table view. We drag, drop, and modify, fit the parent. Again, we need an ID for the table. Very nicely, we can actually nose and take the table from the available list of IDs. Okay, something also new, uh, before we didn't manipulate the columns from the table, we can actually select the columns and pick also the ID. So we're going to modify, we say this is going to be the column name ID and it's going to be name for the text to be displayed. We pick up the second one. For the second one we have the status and we need a third one, a new one. So we can actually come here, table column, drag it and drop it Again, the ID, we have synopsis, synopsis, and then the text to be displayed is the same. Okay, we're good. Uh, now, for this uh, container right here, I also want to do um, set the ID. So there will be details. Okay, and we start populating this area here. So very simple, we need a label, we just drag it and drop it. In the properties again, we select the name, display issue label, and then we're going to call it project ID. Okay, and then we're going to bring a text field, and drag and drop, you see the guidelines that is helping us to make sure things are aligned properly for the ID. See that because we have been assigning the IDs already, so the list start getting smaller. So that means you cannot assign the same ID twice, which is actually very convenient. Uh, so for this one will be synopsis. The prompt test will be synopsis and there's no text so far. Okay, then we need another label. We just drag it and drop it. This is going to be just um, the description. And I think this one doesn't really need an ID, so I'm going to just leave it like that. And I need a text area. Just drag it and drop it. We just resize. Let me just go back again. We need to resize. Again, we do have the guidelines, so I know exactly where to place it. And we need an ID, and it's going to be description file. So pretty easy. Now again, the IDs um, are there for you available rather than typing and, you know, it could actually lead to mistakes if you mistype any of the ID that doesn't um, really match with your file. So it's very, very convenient that these IDs are already providers rather than you have to type them. 
Okay, um, another thing that we want to see is how we set the layout. So if we go back here um, to the anchor panel, we can actually group components. So I can actually go ahead and select project ID with um, project ID and this um, text field. So we can actually arrange, wrap them into a horizontal box, okay? And I can make sure in the layout that this box actually resize properly. So I want to do that um, this horizontal box is going to be anchored to the right and left borders of the container. So it always grow horizontally. For the text field itself, I wanted to always fight for a space available horizontally. So I always wanted to grow. So I can come here to horizontal grow and select always. For the string, I do not want to shrink to disappear. So you know when you start shrinking your windows, you will get dot, dot, dot. I don't want that to happen. So I want the minimum width to be pretty fine size, preferred size, okay? And the text area, I want to anchor to all the different top, bottom, right, and left. So it will be just anchored to the container itself. We can always view the um, sample data, so I know how things are kind of looking, and I can actually preview my application. So this is just a preview. Remember, this is not real data, but it allows, allows to make sure that everything is working properly. If I resize the components, they do resize properly. Okay? Now, uh, CSS files, so we know that we are using, we already set up the CSS files for the project. So for example, I can select the main container and I can just go to properties and say that the style class that we're going to be using is thin, for example. Now I'm going to resize things a bit, so I have a space for the bottoms at the top. So we just resize the screen a little bit. We better save the file, I forgot to save it. And now we're going to bring some uh, image, an image, so I'm going to import from media and then we're going to go to my directory, so you go wherever you unzip your uh, project. Okay, there it is, go to source, issue tracking light and then you will have your image. Okay. Just reorganize things a bit. We bring two bottoms, three bottoms, uh, and then we can actually do copy and paste. So I need three of them. We just go a little bit to the left so I can actually organize things. One, two, and three. I can actually group them and again arrange them into an H box. And then uh, just re reorganize things a bit, so make sure it's aligned. And then I can go to layout and I can set the constraints to be anchored to the top and right. And also in the properties, I can set that the space in between them is going to be 15. Now for each button, I need an ID. So we have the lead issue and the text to be display. It's going to be delete. We have the second one. It's going to be save issue. Pretty good. And the first one is going to be new issue. So you saw how we use all the IDs available. Okay. Um, so what, I, what we're missing right now is just the actions that are to be... Uh, that, is, that are going to take place whenever you click one of these buttons. So if we go back to NetBeans, to the controller, we can see that we have a few methods here. So we can see initialization, we have new issue fire, uh, we receive an action event, and it's actually void method, it doesn't return anything. We have delete issue fire, again, action event, void, and it doesn't return anything. And the last one, save issue file. So these are the methods that actually could be used 
for the bottoms. So again, we can actually go to the code that we have on action, and we can see that the list has been already populated for me. So we know the tool will be able to bring for you those methods that are available for actions. In this case, mouse click and stuff like that. Um, so we have new issue fire. That will be the method that is going to be called whenever the new button get hit. So select that one for the save. We have save issue fire. And for the delete, we have delete issue file. See that the method in different with the IDs do not disappear because more than one places you can be calling the same method. So they are not just, just one. So in different places of your code could be invoking the same method. Okay, so delete. Finally, we save it. And now let's go back to NetBeans and let's run the code just to make sure that everything is working properly. Okay, so we have the projects here. You select the project, it gets the information here. You create a new one, so we can see that down here a new one got created. We can actually type some information and we can save it. Okay, it got saved and you can also delete it and it goes away. So pretty much everything is working. Uh, one last piece, let's bring, uh, because the CSS file has been specified, let's see how you can actually use it in the code. So going back to Scene Builder, we can select the list, we can go to Properties, and we can set the style class will be Dark List. So you will see that it totally changed. Let's save it. Let's run it one more time. So we can see now that we are using the definitions in the, um, that we, could, we have in the CSS file. Okay, so now you can see the dark list. And again, everything is working properly. So thank you so much. Again, this was a little update about Sim Builder, how we do have a better integration with NetBeans. And again, stay tuned for new demos and new updates in the tools. Thank you very much.